In this video, you will be able to master the balancing chemical equation. Of all the skills to know for chemistry, balancing chemical equations is perhaps the most important to master. So many parts of chemistry depend on this vital skill, including stoichiometry, reaction analysis, and lab work. This comprehensive guide will show you the steps to balance even the most challenging reactions and will walk you through a series of examples, from simple to complex. The ultimate goal for balancing chemical reactions is, to make both sides of the reaction equal, in the number of atoms per element. Why do we need to balance a chemical equation? Chemical reaction must be balanced to satisfy the universal law of the conservation of mass, which states that matter can neither be created nor destroyed in a closed system. So, if we start with 10 atoms of oxygen before a reaction, we need to end up with 10 atoms of oxygen after a reaction. This means that chemical reactions is just a rearrangement of atoms. It can neither create nor destroy during the course of chemical reaction. But how do we go about balancing these equations? We know that the number of atoms of each element needs to be the same on both sides of the equation, so it is just a matter of finding the correct coefficients to make that happen. It is best to start with the atom that shows up the least number of times on one side, and balancing that first. Then, move on to the atom that shows up the second least number of times, and so on. At the end, make sure to count the number of atoms of each element on each side again, just to be sure. Let's illustrate this with an example. P4O10, added with water, yields H3PO4. First, let's look at the element that appears least often. Notice that oxygen occurs twice on the left-hand side, so that is not a good element to start out with. We could either start with phosphorus or hydrogen, so let's start with phosphorus. There are four atoms of phosphorus on the left-hand side, but only one on the right-hand side. So, we can put the coefficient of four on the molecule that has phosphorus on the right-hand side to balance them out. Now we can check hydrogen. We still want to avoid balancing oxygen, because it occurs in more than one molecule on the left-hand side. It is easiest to start with molecules that only appear once on each side. So, there are two molecules of hydrogen on the left-hand side and 12 on the right-hand side. So, to balance those out, we have to put a 6 in front of H2O on the left. At this point, we can check the oxygens to see if they balance. On the left, we have 10 atoms of oxygen from P4O10 and 6 from H2O for a total of 16. On the right, we have 16 as well, 4 per molecule, with 4 molecules. So, oxygen is already balanced. This gives us the final balanced equation of P4O10 plus 6H2O and 4H3PO4 Carbon dioxide mixed with water, produced glucose and oxygen gas The first step, is to focus on elements that only appear once on each side of the equation. Here, both carbon and hydrogen fit this requirement. So, we will start with carbon. There is only one atom of carbon on the left-hand side, but six on the right-hand side. So, we add a coefficient of 6 on the carbon-containing molecule on the left. Next, let's look at hydrogen. There are two hydrogen atoms on the left and 12 on the right. So, we will add a coefficient of 6 on the hydrogen-containing molecule on the left. Now, it is time to check the oxygen. There are a total of 18 oxygen molecules on the left, that's from 6 times 2, plus 6 times 1. On the right, 
there are eight oxygen molecules. Now, we have two options to even out the right hand side. We can either multiply glucose or oxygen gas by a coefficient. However, if we change glucose, the coefficients for everything else on the left hand side will also have to change, because we will be changing the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms. To prevent this, it usually helps to only change the molecule containing the fewest elements, in this case, the oxygen. So, we can add a coefficient of 6 to the oxygen on the right. Our final answer will be 6 molecules of carbon dioxide plus 6 molecules of water, then 1 molecule glucose and 6 molecules of oxygen gas. Next we have silicon chloride reacted with water. Give the product first before balancing. The products are silicic acid, H4SiO4 and hydrochloric acid, HCl. Let's start balancing. The only element that occurs more than once on the same side of the equation here is hydrogen, so we can start with any other element. Let's start by looking at silicon. Notice that there is only one atom of silicon on either side, so we do not need to add any coefficients yet. Next, let's look at chlorine. There are four chlorine atoms on the left side and only one on the right. So, we will add a coefficient of four on the right. Next, let's look at oxygen. Remember that we first want to analyze all the elements that only occur once on one side of the equation. There is only one oxygen atom on the left, but four on the right. So, we will add a coefficient of four on the left hand side of the equation. We are almost done. Now, we just have to check the number of hydrogen atoms on each side. The left has eight and the right also has 8, so we are done. Our final answer is SiCl4 and 4H2O, then H4SiO4, and 4HCl. As always, make sure to double check that the number of atoms of each element balances on each side before continuing. How about, aluminum plus hydrochloric acid? Give the product before balancing. This is a single replacement reaction. So, can aluminum replace hydrogen? Certainly yes. Therefore, the products are aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. Let's get started balancing. This problem is a bit tricky, so be careful. Whenever a single atom is alone on either side of the equation, it is easiest to start with that element. So, we will start by counting the aluminum atoms on both sides. There is one on the left and one on the right, so we do not need to add any coefficients yet. Next, let's look at hydrogen. There is also one on the left, but two on the right. So, we will add a coefficient of two on the left. Next, we will look at chlorine. There are now two on the left, but three on the right. Now, this is not as straightforward as just adding a coefficient to one side. We need the number of chlorine atoms to be equal on both sides, so we need to get 2 and 3 to be equal. We can accomplish this by finding the lowest common multiple, LCM. In this case, we can multiply 2 by 3 and 3 by 2 to get the lowest common multiple of 6. So, we will multiply 2 HCl by 3 and ALCl 3 by 2. We have looked at all the elements, so it is easy to say that we are done. However, always make sure to double check. In this case, because we added a coefficient to the aluminum containing molecule on the right hand side, aluminum is no longer balanced. There is one on the left but two on the right. So, we will add one more coefficient. We are not quite done yet. Looking over the equation one final time, we see that hydrogen has also been unbalanced. There are six on the left but two on the right. So, with one final adjustment, 
we get our final answer. 2L plus 6HCl, then 2ALCl3 plus 3H2. Give the product and balance the equation. We have sodium carbonate added with hydrochloric acid. The type of chemical reaction is very good. Double replacement reaction. The products are sodium chloride and carbonic acid. However, carbonic acid can still be decomposed into water and carbon dioxide. Therefore, the complete chemical equation is Na2CO3 plus HCl produced NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. Hopefully by this point, balancing equations is becoming easier and you are getting the hang of it. Looking at sodium, we see that it occurs twice on the left, but once on the right. So, we can add our first coefficient to the NaCl on the right. Next, let's look at carbon. There is one on the left and one on the right, so there are no coefficients to add. Since oxygen occurs in more than one place on the left, we will save it for last. Instead, look at hydrogen. There is one on the left and two on the right, so we will add a coefficient to the left. Then, looking at chlorine, we see that it is already balanced with two on each side. Now we can go back to look at oxygen. There are three on the left and three on the right, so our final answer is Na2CO3 plus 2HCl and 2NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. I guess, you are ready now. So, it is your turn. Give the products, if necessary, then balance the equation. Kindly comment your answer. Thank you. I hope you learned something valuable today. Please like and share. If you are not a subscriber yet, please click the subscribe button. Thank you. See you again for another chemistry video tutorials. Chemistry is so easy, with, Sir D.